And what is consignment process? Though? In this process, we will say that, okay, Mr. Vendor, we are giving a purchase order to you. You deliver the material. And we are giving a space to you. You can put a material stock here. This is a specifically consignment store location. We are basically, in a, this is in our plant, in our premise, but we say this material does not belong to us. In our system, we have inventory for this material, but there is no value. Value is not there. Inventory is there, value is not there. Which means, from inventory side, we can check how much of the inventory is there. That inventory also system would be showing it as a vendor's inventory. It's not our inventory, it's a vendor inventory will be able to see it. If we see into the accounting side, in our accounting books, it will not show in the inventory. The value will not show in the inventory. It is not part of our financial books. So it is with us. We can see the inventory, but it is not in our financial books. It is not belongs to us. It still belongs to vendor. It still belongs to this vendor. Okay, we are saying to vendor, ki, you can put this material in this space. And that whenever it would be required, whenever it would be required, we would be buying this material from you. We would be getting this material from you. We'll be consuming the material from you. We can directly consume or we can get it transferred into our location, which can be a production location. When we transfer or when we consume, at that time it comes in our books at that time only we are liable to pay you until unless we are not transferring it from here to our location or we are not consuming it we are not going to pay to uh, for this material so vendor is keeping this material here and we are consuming it here so you tell me first what is our benefit in this process What is our, as a plant, as a company benefit to do the vendor consignment process? Time. We can save the time. We can save the time. Okay. What else? Time is a benefit. What else? Transportation charges. Transportation charges. Transportation charges. Okay. Transportation charges, anyhow, if it is supplying from here to here, he would have already included in the material charges. Okay, anyhow, it will come to you. If 10 rupees uh, is a material, 1 rupees is transportation, he is also doing a business. So if he's not charging separately, it will come to you in the, it was included in the material cost. The financial implications in the yes. Sorry? Financial, financial. Financial. Uh, whenever we start using, we are generating the uh, payment of the particular material. We don't need to pay the whole amount. Let us pay. Okay. The aggregation of the, uh, our uh, budget. Yeah, so Paulson, your voice is not clear, so we didn't get what you uh, what you're saying, but I get a gist of it. So the, our benefit would be, we are not paying it. We are not paying to the vendor. So our cash flow would be saved. We are getting this material in our premise, but we are not paying to the vendor. So our cash flow would be saved. We are only paying when you are consuming, right? So in our books, in our books, our liability is not increasing we are not liable to pay to the vendor until unless we consume so maybe this is a stock of 50 lakh or 50000 us dollar right 
this 50,000 US dollar, we are not liable. It's not our asset. It's not our liability. It's whose liability? It's vendor's liability. Vendor is liable for it. We are not liable, right? So it is not in our books. So our inventory cost, we are reducing it. We are not, uh, it's not part of our inventory. Second thing, it is very close to us. We can check the inventory. When you can check the inventory, you would be able to do the better planning. If this material is with there with vendor, then when you need this material, vendor will require two to three days and that there can be some delay happen. But here you are sure, this material is available, I can plan my production. This material is available, I can plan my dispatch and delivery to the customer. It can help you a lot in the planning. Uh, you are not paying it. You are not carrying the cost. You, you are not uh, carrying your inventory cost, increasing your inventory in the system. But you are having a full visibility of what is the material available. And whenever it is required, you can quickly get it. You can save the time. Uh, you get the insurity that the, when the material is required, it would be available. That's our benefit. What benefit vendor has? Vendor has a benefit that it is moving our stock. It is moving the stock to our premise. So he can save some of his space. Some of the inventory space he is carrying from us. right? So rather than carrying it in his distribution center, he is carrying it in our storage space. So he can save some space at his end. Secondly, his material is available at the premise. There is another vendor who said, no boss, I will not do the consignment. Whenever you require a material, you give me the purchase order and I will dispatch the material to you. Compared to this vendor, the sale of this vendor would be higher because he has already made the material available next to you. When the material is available next to you, you will, you will quickly consume it. That's where basically a lot of vendors put their material in the Amazon warehouses in the big cities, right? Because they want to make sure that the material is closer to the customer so that it can be quickly delivered. So their delivery time is uh, reducing. They are able to provide the service and the material quickly. They are saving the space and their chances of selling, vendor chances of selling the material to us is also higher compared to another uh, vendors if he is providing a consignment. So that is a win-win situation for vendor and that's a win-win situation for customer also. For both places, it's a win-win situation. Okay, so that is basically a, 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 a basic consignment process from the business perspective, how the vendor consignment process happens from the business perspective. Now from SAP perspective, what happens in the consignment process? In SAP perspective, there would be a purchase order which would be created. And against the purchase order will be receiving the material. GR will be happening. But this purchase order, is not to buy the material. This purchase order is just to allow the vendor to bring the material in our premise. So this is kind of a dummy purchase order. This is not an actual purchase order. This is a dummy purchase order. We just allow the vendor to bring the material in. If you have, if we are allowing the vendor 10,000 purchase order PO we have given to bring the material in, it does not mean we'll pay for the 10,000. It does not mean that we'll be paying as per the prices were available in the purchase order. It does not mean. Okay. We have done the purchase order. We have done the GR, but this GR is under the vendor consignment stock, not in our stock. So this purchase order is also dummy. GR is also increasing the vendor stock. It does not increase any. There's no financial entry. Important question which can be asked in the interviews. There is no financial entries here in the GR when we do it. Only stock get increased, but your financial entry does not get posted here. When you would be transferring the material to your own location from the consignment stock to your own stock, you will transfer or you will consume. At that time, at that time, it will come, the value will come to our inventory the financial entries will come to us at that time, right? At that time it will come. And based on this transfer we are doing, again, we are doing a settlement, not Miro, we do MRKO settlement. That will be punching the invoice. In this process also, when we are doing the transfer, the 
purchase info record would be very important here. We are bringing the price from the purchase info record. During the transfer, if the price need to be bring, it would be coming from the purchase info record. Why the price will come from the purchase info record? What is the reason why we are not taking the price from the purchase order and the purchase info record directly here in this process? Is a special procurement. Okay, any other reason? Try to think about uh, PO is dummy. Yeah, Venkat, now you are getting your answer, right? You are getting your answer which you... Which yes, you are... sir. Regarding a standard purchase order, instance, I got it. Yes. Yeah. Now, what happened that you can ask a vendor, okay, you don't bother about, you have a space, you said, okay, 50,000 you give it to me. And at the time of the 50,000, whatever the price is there, we are not going to pay to that price. Let's say you are calling the material in January. Okay. And you have the purchase info record where the material price is mentioned till March. This is the material price. And then from the 1st April to the next year, there is an increase of 10% of the price. And the material came to you in January. But you have, consu you have consumed in the month of April. Then the January price will not be mentioned on the material. Then the April price would be mentioned on the material because you are consuming in April. And April price change. April has a 10% price hike. You are consuming, you are transferring in April. So it needs to be charged with the April price. So that would be, that need to be taken from the purchase info record. PO is kind of a dummy PO here. So that place also system will try to identify when you do this transaction that uh, uh, which plant we are doing against this, which plant, which purchase organization is there from the standard configuration, standard plant configuration. And for that, what is the purchase info record maintained and what is the value maintained in the purchase info record? With that value, the transaction will happen. That is at high level, the business process for the consignment process. And that is also at the high level, how the uh in sap that it will happen <laughs>